which I man also mentioned, uh, especially for the medical part, I think it will be a real attractive uh, technology. And in US, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the defense industry are really active in, in this sense. But that, due, that uh, due to that, don't, uh, they will transport different material on into the field when they if they are it's a war they don't need uh, to have spare parts uh, all time so they have all only product data which they can use and also in uh, airspace so industry so and um, what i can see today you are able to produce different medical uh, things but both in ceramics and also in different uh, metallic materials too. So, but I don't think that we will be able to produce, let's say, a crankshaft or an engine block or a cylinder head or so. It, but it, when we're making prototypes for the, for the bigger industry, it's a really important uh, step to use additive manufacturing. Uh, it has increased in uh, Sweden just now. And there are also special labs in Germany which are working with the technology. But it's a couple of issues which has to be discussed there. It's the material you're using for the powder. powder. Um, the design technology is also really important. And the fatigue technology process is also important when you're using the, that type of um, uh, technology. So. But uh, we are, let's say, we have been developed in Europe uh, a lot of in, uh, in, uh, in this area. And <clears throat> but uh, the, in US now they're investing a uh, lot of money in the technology. So. It's the old Obama administration. So. I think the digitalization is the most important part here. Uh, we, are, we, are, we have the knowledge about how to turning oper uh, about turning oper uh, operations, milling operations, uh, and drilling operations. And, but we had to apply different uh, dig digital tools to the, these uh, uh, processes. We, it's necessary to have the classical engineering part, but um, uh, but but we had to apply a lots of uh, digital applications to 